Welcome, Reverend Barnes. We're very blessed to have such an extraordinary community to be a part of. So thank you all for be, being here. And recognizing and living our wholeness is my topic today. And um, what a blessing, just the awareness that a teaching like ours is available and the more we pay attention to it, the more we check it out, the deeper it becomes for us. And there was a poignant and precious times in our lives that like now, like today, when we're being called to step up and reach out and get in tune with this most relevant and transformative times in our lives, because it's pretty intense out there. Does anybody agree or am I? Uh, okay. So I'm not the only one feeling it. If life has distracted us for any number of reasons, the call to pay more attention to it, to what is most meaningful and relevant, can radically shake up our lives. We can be really shook up emotionally if all we can see is the shadow side of it. But we don't know what's moving in the collective that's going to raise our collective consciousness. And I do believe that what it takes is for us to get and really get into alignment with the universal spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, or whatever you want to call it. That whole I'm speaking of, I believe, is our entry to a higher collective consciousness, a higher to collective of transformation within, around, and expressing through each one of us. And the more I get it, the more you'll get it, because it's infectious, you know, just so there's people that are just whose natures are infectious. There's a man sitting right over there. He's very talented, and just knowing a little bit about him, he's very uh, talented. You are too, and it's not what we see in someone else that is um, better than it's actually what you see in them is also within you. And if you don't believe that, I challenge you to try it out. Because the news tends to reveal the, reveal the need for us to expand our collective consciousness and gain. We will find more effective ways that we can help and make the world a better place if we ask, seek, and knock. If we ask the universe, how can I help? Seek, look into it, find out where would you fit? Where would you make a little bit more difference? And I kind of tried this out this week. I just tried something at Ananda where I live very close to Ananda. And I, I was kind of amazed. I, I don't know why I was surprised. I, some part of me knew that it was true, but I just said hello and and got a little bit more available myself with other people. And it, it was amazing, really, the, all the joy that came out of it. And I, I know it works. On Saturday's Science of Mind article, a quote said, if we have infinite possibilities for thoughts, words, and actions, this must include all the things that we call missteps, miscalculations, or errors in judgment. We usually don't count those as the good things, right? All we see, oh, that was a mess, or I should have done better, or I could have done better. And the reality is that I agree with the article statement that our life is filled with many opportunities to learn and grow. And those opportunities are not quite as welcome consciously as some of the other ones because they could be painful and they could be um, we worry about what other people will think of us if they discover that I have a need or situation that's going on in my life. So there's a quote by Abraham Joshua Herschel that said, man's quest for God is the following. The world is not a vacuum, in a vacuum. Either we make it an altar for God or it is invaded by demons or negativity, 
or judgment, any number of things. There can be no neutrality. Either we are ministers of the sacred, and it's not just us that have a ministerial title, it's you. It's all of us. We're all one with that divine consciousness. And if we understand that when we judge it, we become slaves to a, a negativity. And um, I felt that those were powerful statements. And the thought that we can rattle your, um, we rattle our own and others' belief systems as it did mine when I encountered it, I thought, hmm, maybe I can immediately shift my gear and see if whatever is bugging me in the moment can actually shift quickly if all I do is decide to change my thinking and change my life. And Carl Jung said that if the inferiority is conscious, duh, there we go, one always has a chance to correct it. And he warned us to be aware that we do not want to repress the shadow because we get it blacker and more dense if we deny and repress it. Does that make sense to you? It did to me. I go, oh really? It, that means that I am saying no to the universe. I'm saying no to whatever's being offered. And sometimes what's being offered is a learning experience. So I know this is true because I've tried it. And um, it only gets worse and I damaged my confidence in my relationships at the same time. I did eventually make, make it past the problem, but I paid for the damage one time pretty severely in my marriage. I was married to someone I grew up with that I knew since I was six years old, and we ended up getting married many years later. <laughs> and, um, you know, I kind of, caught those pictures to, uh, while I was preparing my talk. And I decided I want to live the healthiest, most vital life that I can. Instead of belittling myself for the mistakes that I've made along the way. And so, well, you woulda, coulda, shoulda about this. And I definitely had a fairly long agenda about what I could have done better in my, mar in my marriage. Has anyone had that? Have you ever had a kind of a list of what I could improve on or you could improve on? Um, we're being offered an opportunity to, to awaken to the divine intelligence at a very profound time in history that greatly needs each one of us that can raise our consciousness. Who can raise their consciousness? <laughs> All right. Good. You can. And you will if you just say that to yourself and repeat it to yourself and say, I know that there's a joyful, harmonious person within me, a creative person, a, a wonderful person in me, and I have been in my own way. Am I the only one that's been in my own way? <laughs> no. Oh, good. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Because when there's an absence of love and light, then usually... We've contributed to it. And so I, I know that I am going to stop doing that and stop suffering and feeling pain. And, and I hope I get to it, the, to a point where I can not feel bad that I messed up my own marriage. It's been quite a while, and I think he's on his third one. <laughs> it might not have been all my problem. <laughs> Now, mind you, I just chose not to get married again, and not that they were, they were running towards the door, all, all of them trying to marry me, right? I don't think I'm probably that easy to be married to. So any one of us can still hold on to our judgments and fears and, and prejudices and attitudes that, we're, that someone else or some, some situation is better than and less than, or less than allowing us to believe that we're less than. Because we're comparing. We're comparing, oh, this person drives a nicer car. Oh, this one has, has more vacations than I do. Or this one has whatever it is. So whatever that is, 
I want you to change it to an affirmation this week. If you catch yourself, I would like you to do yourself a favor and write it out into an affirmation that affirms who you really are, that affirms the creative, beautiful soul that you really are. It's the truth. And what do they say? The truth says that you free. Not, it's going to put you in jail and make you feel miserable for the rest of your life. So that's why our wonderful t uh, affirmation, change your thinking and you'll change your life. It doesn't say change your thinking and you'll become miserable and, and uh, dislike yourself for the rest of your life. And so I know you can do it. I know the science of mind has a wonderful wonderful tool and it it be it was a great awakening for me to return to the science of mind I, it wasn't that long ago when i thought gee i really haven't come over to the center for spiritual living for a long time duh i am a science of mind minister and i and i've always loved it and i when i came back it was like watering the plant and it was me and I know that we can do it. I'm, teaching is so incredible. It's powerful. It's transformational. But the solution and the remedy of being absent on some level is learning how to be fully present, kind, and compassionate. With who? Yourself. You. Everyone. Yes. Love yourself, and, and that's hard for most of us. It was for me, especially because I feel like I messed up my marriage, and if not feel like it, I know I did. So, you know, if it was a goal that I was after, not consciously, but I, I definitely got it. In Self-Realization, there's a, a book called Where There Is Light, and Paramahansa Yogananda wrote, change your thoughts, Sound familiar? If you wish to change your circumstances. So obviously we say change your thinking and, cha and you'll change your life. But it isn't just a euphemism. It's a practice. And it's something that we can do in a nanosecond. It's not going to go, oh, I'm going to have to practice this all day. And I'm not going to make any shifts until I really get it. The truth is that we can change our thoughts. We can change our thinking. We can change our energy field. We can change the way our relationships interact. We can if we really, really believe it and we do our best. So I'm willing to bet that each one of us can improve even a little on our skills, becoming more present, alive, How's that for an idea? And loving. Could you become more alive? Could you, could you have more spunk? Could you have, am I the only one here? Or there's a couple people that are nodding there. <laughs> really, you can. But you have to make up your mind to. And you have to know that we, we say, what I think about, I bring about. Hello, what are we thinking? What are we bringing about? I know that I was making myself miserable because I was going, I was looking through my wedding pictures, looking for some things that I was, I mean, now what happened? I felt guilty. And I thought, oh, I ruined my marriage. Well, yeah, it might, might have been him since he's on his, also, it was both of us. Um, you know, I have to be more present to myself. I have to be more present to my, my possibilities and not just stand in my own way. And I know you guys are incredible people. I know almost all of you to some degree, and you have a radiant light. It's who you are. I believe that it's who you are. So I believe all of you are radiant souls, and I believe you make a difference. Raise your hand if you think you might make a little bit of difference. All right, now you guys will make a lot of difference because your hands were a little bit over than you. <laughs> you know, good. We believe in changing your thinking. We believe changing your life. And I know that 
this is a time that needs us the most. And you're, you're wonderful souls. The world is needing all that your great joy, your music, your love, your harmony, your wisdom, your kindness. And I thank you so much for being here today to support each one of us. And we're being here together to remember that love is finding a way. And it's right there in you, in me, in all of us. Many blessings.